Okay, so starting off with the first discovery at number 10, we have penicillin. Now, if Alexander Fleming, who is a Scottish scientist, had not discovered penicillin, which were the first antibiotics in the year 1928, we would probably still be dying from things like stomach ulcers, as well as strep throat and scarlet fever, staph infections, Lyme diseases, all of that. But actually, bonus fact, you know, I'm actually allergic to penicillin, so if I take it, I could literally just drop dead. So I'm probably better off getting one of these diseases that I just mentioned than actually taking these antibiotics. But either way, there's no doubt that penicillin has been a game-changing lifesaver more than people even realize. Penicillins are actually a group of antibacterial drugs that attack a wide range of bacteria. Now, they were the first drugs of its type that doctors used, and drugs in the penicillin class work by indirectly bursting the bacterial cell walls. And they do this by acting directly on the peptidoglycans, which play a very important role in structuring bacterial cells. Now, peptidoglycans create a mesh-like structure around the plasma membrane of bacterial cells, and then it increases the strength of the cell walls and prevents external fluids and particles from entering into the cell. So penicillins disrupt this whole process. And our number nine brings us electricity. Now, the life-changing discovery of electricity is attributed to the English scientist Michael Faraday. And his main discoveries include the principle underlying electromagnetic induction, diamagnetism, as well as electrolysis. Faraday's experiments also created the first generator, which was a forerunner of the huge generators that produce our electricity today. Electricity is the flow of electrical power or charge. And electricity is both a basic part of nature as well as one of the most widely used forms of energy. And it's pretty unique because electricity that we use is actually a secondary energy source because it's produced by converting primary sources of energy such as coal, natural gases, nuclear energy, solar energy, and wind energy into electrical power. And electricity is also referred to as an energy carrier. And this means that it can be converted to other forms of energy such as mechanical energy or even heat. And primary energy sources are renewable or non-renewable energy, but the electricity that we use is neither renewable nor non-renewable. The discovery at number eight is gravitational waves. Gravitational waves proved Einstein's theory of general relativity. Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity states that space and time are unified into one continuum, space-time. Objects in the universe, no matter their size, warp space-time as they move, creating ripples known as gravitational waves. Until recently, however, that theory was just that simply a theory. But new technological advancements allow astrophysicists to measure the massive gravitational waves created by huge objects in deep space. Usually these come from black holes and neutron stars millions and millions of light years away, so their waves are incredibly faint by the time they even reach Earth. But speaking of that, we have to go on to the discovery of the theory of relativity. Encompassing two interrelated theories by Albert Einstein, special relativity and general relativity. This theory of relativity, which was published in the year 1905, transformed theoretical physics and astronomy during the 20th century, superseding a 200-year-old theory of mechanics created primarily by Newton. Now, this theory became the foundation of much of modern science as we know it. Moving on now to number six, we have the periodic table. So back in the year 1869, there was a Russian chemist by the name of Dmitry Mendeleev, and he noticed that when arranged by atomic weight, the chemical elements lined up to form groups with similar properties. With this knowledge, he was able to create the first periodic table, which was one of the most important discoveries ever in chemistry. Now, the periodic table, also known as the periodic table of elements, is organized so that scientists can quickly determine the properties of individual elements, such as their mass, their electron number, as well as the electron configuration, and their unique chemical properties. Properties. Now, metals reside on the left side of the table, while non-metals reside on the right side of the table. Halfway into this episode, at number five, let's talk about the theory of evolution by natural selection. Now, this one has become a debatable topic, and it's been one for years, with many people not even considering it as a science. But regardless of where you are on the belief spectrum, there's no doubt that this one has 
definitely change the world of science. Inspired by the observation he made on the second survey voyage of the Beagle between the years 1831 and 1836, Charles Darwin began to develop what later became known as the theory of evolution by natural selection, which is a key mechanics of evolution. And the theory has two main points, and this is according to Brian Richmond, who is a creator of human origins at the American University of Natural History in New York City. He says, all life on Earth is connected and related to each other. And this diversity of life is a product of modifications of populations by natural selection, where some traits were favored in an environment over others. And this theory, by the way, is sometimes described as survival of the fittest, but that can actually be misleading that term survival of the fittest. When it comes to the theory of evolution by natural selection, the term fitness refers not to the organism's strength or its athletic ability, but rather it refers to the ability to survive as well as reproduce. Number four brings us scientists who have successfully edited the first human embryo ever in the United States. Now this was in July 27th of 2017. Researchers in Portland, Oregon, they achieved a significant breakthrough in gene editing technology. Taking advantage of the revolutionary gene editing technique, CRISPR, a gene linked to heat conditions was successfully deleted from a human embryo. We've gone now to number three. Scientists discovered an alien planet that's the best candidate for life as we know it. So on April 19th, scientists at the European Organization for Astronomical Research, or the ESO, found the best candidate for extraterrestrial life so far. Now this super Earth is named LHS 1140b and it was found in the habitable zone of a dim star 40 light years away from Earth. It receives about half as much sunlight from its star, the LHS 1140, as the Earth does from the Sun. So I know there's been a lot of talk recently about us colonizing Mars and Mars being the next place for human beings to live because let's face it, sometimes we treat the Earth really, really, really bad. Who knows how long it's gonna last. But hey, this one may prove as a better contender than even Mars. Next up at number two, I wanna talk about the scientists who are one step closer to growing human organs in pigs. So scientists at the Salk Institute in California, they said that they're one step closer to being able to grow human organs inside of pigs. In their latest research, they were able to grow human cells inside of pig embryos, which is a small but promising step toward organ growth. But why would anybody want this research done in the first place? Well, you see, scientists say that it could help with studying disease and help develop different drugs. It could also be a way to help with human organ donation as well. And finally, number one, this one, definitely a game changer, DNA. So many people believe that American biologist James Watson, as well as English physicist Francis Crick, were the ones who discovered DNA back in the 1950s. But in fact, it was first identified in the late 1860s by a Swiss chemist named Friedrich Meischer. And then in the decades following Meischer's discovery, other scientists carried out many research studies that helped us understand how organisms pass on their genes and how the workings of cells are actually governed. DNA has even come in handy where people can actually mix DNA and produce a child with certain eye colors and certain characteristics. And it's also been a game changer when it comes to crime because if it wasn't for the discovery of DNA, a lot more people would be behind bars than there currently are. Okay, so let's begin. First up, we have penicillin. Now, if Alexander Fleming, a Washington scientist, had not discovered penicillin, the first antibiotics in 1928, we would probably still be dying from things like stomach ulcers, strep throat, scarlet fever, staph infections, Lyme disease, and leptospirosis, and things like that. Our next life-changing scientific breakthrough was discovery of electricity. The life-changing discovery of electricity is attributed to the English scientist Michael Faraday. His main discoveries included the principles underlying electromagnetic induction, diamagnetism, and electrolysis. Faraday's experiments also created the first generator, which was the forerunner of the huge generators that produce our electricity today. Okay, now let's look at DNA. Many people believe that American biologist James Watson and English physicist Francis 
Crick discovered DNA in the 1950s. But in fact, it was first identified in the late 1860s by Swiss chemist Frederick Meinscher. Then, in the decades following Meinscher's discovery, other scientists carried out many research studies that helped us understand how organisms pass on their genes and how the workings of cells are governed. We've all heard about the theory of relativity. So yeah, encompassing two interrelated theories by Albert Einstein, special relativity and general relativity, the theory of relativity published in 1905 completely transformed theoretical physics and astronomy during the 20th century, superseding a 200 year old theory of mechanics created primarily by Newton. This theory became the foundation for much of modern science. Now I'm sure we all know this thing, the periodic table, right? In the year 1869, Russian chemist Dmitry Mendeleev, he noticed that when arranged by atomic weight, the chemical elements lined up to form groups with smaller properties. With this knowledge, he was able to create the first periodic table, one of the most important discoveries in chemistry. Now this next scientific breakthrough is a bit of a controversial one because there's still a lot of debate about this, and that is the theory of evolution by natural selection. Inspired by an observation that he made on the second survey voyage of the Beagle in 1831 to 1836, Charles Darwin began to develop what later became known as the theory of evolution by natural selection, the key mechanism of evolution. And regardless of whether or not you believe natural selection is scientific, it's no doubt that this has really shifted the course of science on our world today. Now let's take a look at some breakthroughs from the 21st century. Scientists successfully edited the first human embryo ever in the United States in July 27th, 2017. Researchers in Portland, Oregon have achieved a significant breakthrough in gene editing technology. Taking advantage of the revolutionary gene editing technique, CRISPR, a gene linked to heart conditions, was successfully deleted from a human embryo. Now our eighth breakthrough is that scientists discovered an alien planet that's the best candidate for life as we know it. Scientists at the European Organization for Astronomical Research, or the ESO, found the best candidate for extraterrestrial life for human beings. The super-Earth named LHS 1140b was found in the habitable zone of a dim star 40 light years away from Earth. It receives about half as much sunlight from its star, LHS 114, as the Earth does from the sun. I mean, this is just fascinating stuff, so let's just keep it going. All right, next up we have gravitational waves that proves Einstein's theory of general relativity. Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity states that space and time are unified in one continuum, usually commonly referred to as the space-time continuum. Objects in the universe, no matter their size, warp space-time as they move, creating ripples known as gravitational waves. Until recently, however, that theory was just that uh, theory but new technological advances allow astrophysicists to measure the massive gravitational waves created by huge objects in deep space usually these come from black holes and neutron stars millions and millions of light years away so their waves are incredibly faint by the time they reach earth and the final scientific breakthrough I want to look at is the scientists are one step closer to growing human organs in pigs. So check this. Scientists at the Salk Institute for Biological Studies in California said they're one step closer to being able to grow human organs inside pigs. Like this is nuts. So like in their latest research, they were able to grow human cells inside pig embryos, a small but promising step towards organ growth. You may ask, you know, why would anybody want this research done in the first place? Well, scientists say it could help with studying disease and help develop different drugs. It could be a way to help with human organ donation. Number 10 first, hospitals. So the first modern hospital with nurses and training center and everything was in Cairo. The Ahmed Ibtulun Hospital was established in the year 872. All patients received 
received free health care, which was a Muslim tradition that was institutionalized when the hospitals started to become a thing. Now, this model would later serve as a template for other hospitals that would appear in different parts of the world. And number nine is the toothbrush. So, Islam places a lot of emphasis on hygiene, and the ancient Egyptians are thought to have chewed on twigs from what's called a toothbrush tree. However, these twigs, also known as miswaka, became known to a lot more people when the Prophet Muhammad started using them regularly to brush his teeth. The Quran does not mention miswak twigs specifically, however, many Islamic scholars have mentioned it in their writings. Number eight brings us magnifying glass as well as glasses. It's grouped together, and you'll see why. The scholar Hassan ibn al Haytham from Bashra, Iraq, was the first person to describe how the eye actually works. He carried out some experiments with reflective materials and proved that our eyes don't actually emit rays to perceive our environment as it was believed up until then. He also discovered that curved glass surfaces can actually be used for magnification. His glass reading stones were the first magnifying glasses that were ever created and it was from these that glasses were later developed. So people started wearing them on their face to now see better, increase magnification, and of course that led to telescopes and binoculars, so many other things. An amazing one is also the camera. So Hassan ibn al Hitham appears again for his revolutionization of optics. So he completely rejected the Greek idea that invisible light rays emitted from our eyes and that caused sight. And he believed that vision was caused by light reflecting off an object and entering our eye. In a genius experiment using a dark room with a pinhole on one side and a white sheet on the other side, he proved this theory. Light came through the pinhole and it projected an inverted image of objects that were outside of the room on to the sheet on the opposite side. He called this the Camara, and it was the world's first camera obscura, which we get the term camera from. Clocks come in at number six. So there was an ingenious man called Al Jazeri from Turkey, and he was a very devout Muslim as well as a highly skilled engineer, and he created the concept of automatic machines. By the year 1206, Al Jazeri had made numerous clocks of all shapes and sizes. So, of course, as we need time today to stay on schedule, structure our lives, so did Muslims over 700 years ago. They knew that it was important to know the time so that they can do things like their regular prayers and things like that. So this, of course, was a revolutionary invention. At number five, we have surgical instruments. So back in the 10th century, the surgeon Abul Qasim Khalif Il Abad Al Zawahri, he was a man known in the West as Abul Qasis, and he wrote the Al Tadrif, his medical encyclopedia, which included a section called On Surgery. And this had a large collection of over 200 surgical tools. Using instruments for surgery was a very revolutionary concept because it actually enabled science to change from just being a speculative theory to something that can be experimental now. His work was the first in history of the medicine to illustrate the use of surgical instruments and their design have only changed a little bit in a thousand years. So it were these illustrations that would lay the foundations for surgery in Europe and in other parts of the world. The fourth spot brings us flying machines. So Abbas ibn Furnas, he was the first person to make a real attempt to construct a flying machine and actually fly. In the ninth century, he designed a winged device that looked like a bird costume and in a trial run that he did in Spain, Furnace flew upward for a few moments before falling right down and breaking his back. His design would be an inspiration for future flying devices and vehicles. And number three brings us coffee. So coffee, to a large degree, is the best known of the Muslim world's exports. While it originated in Ethiopia, it soon found its way over to the Red Sea, to the Arabian Peninsula, where it grew in popularity. The legend tells us of an Arab goat herder who noticed their change in mood when the goats ate a certain berry. So he boiled the berries and came up with the first coffee. 
So yeah, coffee, a very interesting origin story. I know there are some conflicting origin stories out there, but let me know what you think down below. Yeah, Muslim invention or not? This one is probably the one I was a little bit eh about, but sources do indicate that this was a Muslim invention. Algebra is at number two. So the word algebra comes from the title of a Persian mathematician and his famous work in the 9th century. And that was called the Kitab al Jabir wal i Mugabala. Muhammad ibn Musa Khorazim introduced the beginnings of algebra, and it was a revolutionary move away from the Greek concept of mathematics, which was for the most part based on geometry. He also was the first person to introduce a concept of raising a number to a power. And in at number one, we have the modern standing army. So the first modern standing army was developed by the Ottoman Empire. While technically speaking, you know, a slave army in the early days in Europe was thought to be the first standing army. But of course, other standing armies did exist as well in the past, like the Romans and the Spartan armies, for example. However, unlike other armies before them, the Genesis soldiers were actually paid a regular income and they were however forbidden to marry and engage in any type of trade. They would later become famed and known for their internal cohesion, their strict discipline as well as their fighting skills. By the 17th century their power would grow so much to a level that they were able to become what's called kingmakers in the Ottoman Empire and then they were later disbanded. Starting with number 10 the laser. On May 16, 1960, Jewish-American physicist Theodore Maimon, he fired the first laser. However, his work was based on theoretical foundations first established by Albert Einstein, who was also Jewish, in 1917. Today, the laser is used widely in our everyday devices like barcode scanners and even DVDs. Also, specialized tools are used to mark targets and measure speed, all because of the laser. The name laser is actually an acronym and I did not know this I just found out when doing research for this video it's an acronym for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation now you guys know as well moving on to number nine we have the pacemaker and defibrillators Jewish American cardiologist Paul Zoll he helped in the invention of pacemakers and defibrillators these inventions are life-saving and they're a huge accomplishments in the world of science so a pacemaker when it's inserted in the human body, it helps regulate the heartbeat, while the defibrillator restarts the heart in the case of an irregular heartbeat and other heart problems. For anyone suffering from heart condition, these inventions are medical miracles that were so desperately needed. Coming in at the number eight spot is genetic engineering. In 1972, Jewish American scientist Paul Berg created the first recombinant DNA molecules, which are responsible for modern genetic engineering. Now this invention has faced a lot of controversy because of the harmful effects that the food items can have which are produced through genetic engineering. But on the other hand, genetic engineering has shown that it might be an effective way to treat cancer. But also this procedure has been used for mass production of insulin and also to help crops become disease resistant. From there we look at stainless steel at number seven. Hans Goldschmidt, who was a German Jewish chemist, he invented the process for producing carbon-free chromium in the year 1893 and patented the thermite reaction in the year 1895. Now this discovery was very important for the development of stainless steel, which is an alloy with a high chromium content and low carbon content. Scientists were able to begin producing stainless steel in the early 1900s thanks to Goldschmidt's invention. This steel is not like ordinary steel and it's very strong enough to fight corrosion. And of course, kitchen appliances made of stainless steel, they're very common and present in almost every household now. Number six takes us to a very famous equation, E equals MC squared. Mass energy equivalence is the mass of an object and its energy concept. So this same formula was the one used in the creation of the atomic bomb. However, long before the atomic bomb was conceived, Jewish physicist Albert Einstein Einstein was the first to propose that mass energy equivalence is a fundamental principle in the symmetries of space and time. Next up,
up at number five, cholera and bubonic vaccination. By the late 1800s, no vaccine for the lethal diseases cholera and bubonic plague existed. Though Jews were historically blamed for the 1300s Black Death outbreaks, well, Jewish bacteriologist Waldemar Hafkini, he decided that he would not let that stop him from developing a cure for cholera and the bubonic plague. So what did he do? He got to work on developing vaccines for these diseases. He tested these vaccines on himself by putting himself in danger. So this guy was very brave as well. In the year 1893, he even relocated to India for 30 years to be closer to the source of the outbreaks. Bubonic plague, also known as Black Death, caused the most deadly disease outbreak in history. In the 19th century, when huge global trade was really booming, cholera was given the ability to spread to almost every single part of the earth. So luckily, we had these vaccines now. Moving on now to number four, polio vaccine. So the Austrian Jewish biologist Karl Landensteiner, he began working on identifying the biological pathogen that caused polio and was successful in the year 1908. In the 1940s and the 1950s, Jonas Salk, who is a Jewish medical researcher, he spent seven years developing a vaccine for polio. Now polio, which is short for poliomyelitis, is an infectious disease that can cause cause paralysis, you know, trying to say polio myelitis you know, three times fast. I could see why they just say polio. But either way, this disease, it first appeared in Europe and then it made its way to the United States. Then in the 19th century, polio became the most dreaded disease, especially for children, infecting hundreds of thousands of people. Now the vaccine was finally discovered in the year 1955 after involving over 1 million school children. And it has since reduced the number of polio victims to just under 1,000 per year. Salk, he refused to patent the vaccine because he didn't want to profit from saving people's lives. Number three brings us nuclear weapons. Robert Oppenheimer, who is a Jewish American theoretical physicist, is known as the father of the atomic bomb for his work on the Manhattan Project, which developed the first nuclear weapons. After World War II, Oppenheimer went to work opposing the spread of nuclear weapons, eventually becoming the chief advisor to the UN group that was tasked with regulating nuclear technology. Now, in the year 1945, America had dropped the first nuclear bombs over Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan. As a result, the United Nations, they swiftly moved to develop regulations for the new dangerous technology, hoping that these two events would be the first and the last time that nuclear weapons were used in a war. However, as a result of the Cold War, both the Soviet Union and the United States, they engage in what is known as the nuclear arms race, which has had massive impacts on the world. And it led to now several other countries being suspected of being in possession of nuclear weapons. And some countries have actually been confirmed to have nuclear weapons. From there, let's look at capitalism. Not the invention of capitalism, but the revolutionization of capitalism. Jewish political economist David Ricardo made major contributions to capitalism. In the fifth century, with the end of feudalism, different forms of capitalism began to become the economic systems of the Western world. Now, the system runs on profits made in a market economy and is still used today all over the world. Now, David Ricardo, he was an 18th century English economist that was renowned for his contributions to economic theory. He developed the comparative advantage theory as well as the labor theory theory of value and also the theory of rents which founded other schools of thought and now forms the basis of current economics globally. Now in at number one, let's talk about Google. Don't be evil is the company's motto which is shared by both Larry Page and Sergey Brin who are two Jewish co-workers who founded Google while they were both students at Stanford University. Google was founded in the year 1998. Now at first no one was able to understand or even predict the impact that this 
search engine was going to have on the internet and on the world at large. Now, due to the wide range of products it produces, including Gmail, Drive, Google Home, things like that, Google is no longer just recognized as a search engine. It's a very powerful company. And Google also oversees the creation of the Android operating system, which powers all Android mobile devices. And they own YouTube, which is the website that you're probably watching this video on right now. Definitely changed the world.